Hey there guys, today's going to be the long overdue 12 volt wiring video for the travel trailer project. I'm not even sure what part in the series this is, but I think it's like 9 or 10. Anyway, today I'm going to show you how I wired up the trailer for 12 volt, hooked up all the lights, fuse panel, battery, things like that. So there is quite a bit in there and it's kind of a long video. So I'm going to take you to the trailer now and uh, we'll get started. All right, so now that we're inside of the trailer, I'm gonna to try to give you a complete tour of the 12 volt system, but I'm gonna break it down into each individual component, so hopefully it's a bit easier to follow. First, I will talk about the wiring that I used and how I ran it throughout the trailer to each individual light and the other appliances that the 12 volt system is powering. I'll then talk about how I made all of those connections from the lights and appliances to the wiring and how I grounded everything to the frame of the trailer. I'll then go through each individual circuit um, and tell you uh, which lights and appliances are run on each circuit and then how all of those wires eventually tie together and make their way all the way to the battery box that holds the battery and the uh, fuse panel and all that stuff. Um, and then obviously I'll give a tour of that battery box and show you how everything is wired and kind of uh, maybe my thought process on how I put everything together. And then I'll talk about other little things in between like how I protected the wires with uh, conduit and uh, just other little things like that. So uh, let me talk about the wiring now and then I'll get in the circuits and we'll eventually make our way to the power source. The first step in creating my 12 volt system was to run the wiring. The majority of this wiring was run throughout the ceiling of the trailer in the gaps left behind by the interior ceiling framework. The wiring that I used consisted of two 12 gauge wires with one being a positive and one being a negative or a hot and a ground wire depending on how you want to look at it. Every place that these wires pass through any of the framework, I made sure to add a metal plate so as to protect the wires from any screws when I reinstalled the ceiling panels. And then in the places where the wires were exposed inside cabinets where they lead to lights, I made sure to cover everything either in a rigid plastic uh, conduit or a flexible uh, conduit just to keep the wires from getting damaged. Now for the connections. On one end of the wires that I ran throughout the trailer, I added ring connectors. One ring connector would be for the black wire or the ground wire to be grounded directly to the frame. And then the other one on the red side, which is the positive side, will be used to connect to the fuse panel. After I made the connections with my crimper, I then wrapped it with electrical tape. Uh, I would definitely recommend a heat shrink here, but uh, I just decided to go for electrical tape because it was a much more affordable and I think it'll hold up just fine. On the other end of the wires, I added spade connectors. These come in a male and female format that plug into one another and it makes connecting wires of dissimilar gauges really easy. So for instance, the wires that I ran throughout the trailer are 12 gauge and the wires on this little charging station that I'm about to connect up are 14 gauge. They both can be connected pretty securely. And here I will show connecting them onto the voltmeter and charging station and then uh, I'll finish it out the same way that I did the others. Okay. 
And here's a quick look using those same spade connectors to connect my ventilation fan. You might notice the wire colors don't exactly match up, which is why I have one of them labeled pretty prominently. And I have just found that that is the case with a lot of these type of appliances, but it usually isn't too hard to figure out. And the grounding of everything was pretty straightforward. I just tried to locate all of the grounds in places that were easily accessible. So all of the ceiling lights are ground in the upper front cabinet directly to the trailer frame. And then my charging station and 12 volt socket for my cooler are ground to a nearby wheel well. And to make the ground, I just ground off some of the paint, added a little battery grease, and then a stainless steel self-tapping screw with a ring connector. And you can kind of see that here. All right, so hopefully that made sense and at least gave you a basic idea on how I did the wiring and connections in the main portion of the trailer. Now I'm gonna take the camera and I will talk about all the circuits and kind of what controls what, and then I will finish off with uh, a tour of the battery box. Now the first circuit in the trailer is the most complex and that is because it is controlled by switches. It includes this main light which is right behind the ventilation fan, this light over here which is what I kind of refer to as a potential future bathroom light, and it includes the porch light that is just on the other side of that wall, and they are controlled by way of this switch box. This switch right here controls the main interior light and this one controls the porch light. And I have a little video when I was wiring that I'll show you right now that gives a better explanation on how those wires come in and power those lights. So here's a quick routing of the power for the main interior light and the porch light. It comes from the front cabinet, runs up in there, and then it runs down to the switch box. And then one wire will go up to the porch light and the other one will go up back into the ceiling and then over to the main uh, interior light so that it can all be uh, worked with this little switch box right here. And here's where the first circuit wires come into the front cabinet where they will eventually meet up with the rest of the ceiling run circuits on their way to the power supply. You'll see I have them labeled in case I ever have any problems I can easily identify what is what. And they eventually will continue in this piece of uh, plastic conduit uh, on their way to the power supply. And yes, eventually I'll end up covering all that up. Now for circuit number two. This is a really simple one. It just controls the ventilation fan, this overhead ceiling light, and this light that is located at the bottom of this cabinet that lights up the front dinette. And just the same as circuit number one, all of those wires run through the ceiling and are labeled and the grounds are easily accessible. And then they eventually run to this piece of plastic conduit back there um, and are protected in their route to eventually going to the power source. And then circuit number three is even more simple. It just controls the light that is located above the kitchenette, as well as a reading light that is located above the rear bed platform. Both of these lights have their wires run through the cabinets and then into the ceiling, and they both eventually make their way back to the front cabinet to meet up with the first two circuits and then they eventually go down right there and make their way down into the front dinette seat where they eventually go to the battery box and now I will show you the next two circuits. And then the last two circuits, number four and five, each power just one thing, and that is because they are higher draw circuits. Number four is a voltmeter and a charging station on the side of the kitchenette. It has a 12 volt plug and two USB outlets, and I'll show you a couple clips of that now.
And then from there, the wiring for circuit number five continues its way behind the kitchenette cabinet and into the rear bed platform where my 12 volt Dometic cooler is stored. And that wiring powers a bank of 12 volt sockets, which is the power source for the cooler. I don't have it plugged in right now. And that is just because I don't have my solar panels hooked up and I don't want to drain my battery until I get those panels hooked up. But now I'll show you what that wiring looks like behind this cabinet. And then the wiring for circuits four and five meets up with the wiring of circuits one, two, and three in the base of that front dinette seat. And I'll give you a better look at that now. So here's a better look at how all those wires come together underneath that front seat. Over here on the left are circuits four and five, which you just saw, and they come from just behind that piece of aluminum trim right there. They then meet up with circuits one, two, and three that come from the upper cabinet right here. And everything is run in black flexible conduit so as to protect the wires from any damage. And then that little red coil over there is just a spare circuit that I added just in case I wanna add a light in the future. Everything is run through the floor and then it comes up into the battery box to the fuse panel and eventually the battery which I will show you now. All right, so here is the battery box you saw me make several months ago, and this is really the heart of the entire trailer electrical system. It houses a fuse panel for all of the circuits that I just showed you inside. It has a power switch that controls the power that goes to that fuse panel. There is a solar charge controller, as well as a power switch that controls the power that will eventually go to that charge controller, but I'm not gonna talk about that now because I haven't had the, or I don't have the solar panels installed. I have a little auxiliary light, and then it also houses the lithium battery, which is probably the most uh, important component of this. And then it also has a little grounding block that I will show you in a little bit more detail in just a second. So first I'll start out with the fuse panel. Starting from inside the trailer, all of the 12 volt wires run down through the floor underneath the trailer and come up into the battery box right here. I have them wrapped in conduit and then I just have everything organized so that it can be distributed into the fuse panel. Uh, right here in somewhat of an organized fashion. I'll show you a close clip right here, but you'll see each uh, circuit is labeled. So if I ever have any problems with that, I can uh, take this off and check to see if one of those fuses is burnt out or anything else. So it makes for easy diagnostics. And that fuse panel gets its power from the battery by way of this battery switch right here. So again, if I ever need to do any maintenance or just simply shut down power to the entire trailer, I can just switch that battery switch right there and turn off the power. And then that battery switch is connected to the battery all the way around, around here to the positive side of the battery. And then on this side, which is the negative side of the battery, is grounded to the trailer frame where all of the lights and appliances are grounded. And here's just a closer look at that grounding block. You'll see the negative cable from the battery goes down to it as well as a grounding cable from the solar charge controller. And then the grounding block uh, goes through the bottom of the battery box right there. And I'll show you a clip of how it's grounded to the trailer frame. And one last thing on this fuse panel I forgot to mention is this auxiliary light. It's just the same type of light I used for the inside of the trailer. And I just put it in here so I could have a little extra light when I decide to check things out and it's dark. And <laughs> that's pretty much how it works. So uh, I think I might show you a few more clips of inside here or uh, maybe I'll wrap this video up. Okay. 
All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope it was informative and maybe gave you a good idea of just what goes into a system like this for something like a travel trailer. I'm quite sure I didn't do it exactly to industry standards and I might have done some of the things unorthodox, but the system works and I think I've added in several reasonable safeguards and I think it's gonna be a safe and usable system for many years to come. And on that point for years to come, I think I forgot to cover the battery when I was doing a tour of the battery box. I think I just got lost in all the other components, but uh, for those of you who didn't see my battery lock video, that is a Relyon RB100 battery. It's a 100 amp hour lithium battery. And the advantage of a battery like that is that it can last for 10 to 15 years, which is why I made the investment in it. Um, and it only weighs about 30 pounds versus if I had the equivalent uh, lead acid batteries, would be probably 150 to 200 pounds in that box uh, just to get the same usable capacity. So um, I'll probably touch a little bit more on that uh, in the solar video, but I uh, <laughs> just wanted to touch on it uh, for those of you who didn't see the battery lock video. And then lastly, I think some of you may have noticed that I now have roll-up blinds on the insides of the trailer windows. That is likely something that I will cover in a future video, along with several other obscure things that I've done along the way, also including cabinet locks and drawer locks, which are already currently installed. Um, but uh, I just didn't think they were fitting to put in a video yet until I had several of them combined. So, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you like this. Check me out on Instagram. And uh, next video is going to be the solar. All right, see ya.